Hello, my name is Paula Chichokia. I'm fashion and textiles curator at the National Gallery of Victoria. And this is my colleague, uh, Sinead Hobson, NGV curator of Indigenous Art. Thank you for joining us for our new uh, virtual program, Fashion Fridays, where we look at pieces of fashion and textiles um, from the collection as well as upcoming exhibitions. And uh, we're joined by curators, conservators and special guests. Uh, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting, the Wurundjeri Woi uh, people, uh, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present, as well as any Aboriginal elders who are listening from other communities. And because we are all meeting remotely, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, any of the traditional owners of any other lands um, upon which any of you are on and pay my respects um, to their communities as well. So we have um, this wonderful new acquisition in the fashion and textiles um, collection. And I apologise because I'm trying to switch slides um, and I don't know that that's happening. Um, so, but you can see it up on the screen um, in front of you. And this is actually a piece by Paul McCann, who is a multidisciplinary artist. He's actually been um, painting for over a decade and his works are depicting landscapes and regions um, from around his traditional land, uh, which is actually called Delu, and it's located 350 kilometres southwest of Darwin uh, in the Northern Territory. So he has a, a history of um, painting, but also a fashion and textiles background as well. Uh, he, at 17, he went to Charles Darwin University, uh, studied fashion design for two and a half years, and he talks about the experiences, uh, one, where he learnt sewing, he learnt design, um, painting, uh, and he said, you name it, I'll have a crack at it. So very sort of artistic and, and creative and, and interested. And this dress actually is the result um, of a debut um, from Australian Fashion Week. So we only returned to sewing in November 2020, and this was just after uh, the second Melbourne lockdown. So a time of reflection for all of us, that's for sure. Um, so apart from being launched at Australian Fashion Week, he also won the National Indigenous um, Fashion Awards in 2021. So wonderful. Uh, this gown um, has is the biggest gown he's ever made. It has 20 metres in the skirt, um, six metres of which are hand-painted. So you can see that pattern coming through. Uh, the organza, which is a sort of transparent fabric with a luminescence to it, and also the gum nuts that are painted, taken from nature, um, painted and hand applied across um, the bodice. It's off the shoulder, uh, laces up at the back, has a big hoop underneath, uh, and it took him about a month to make, a month and a half, uh, lots of late nights, early morning finishes, uh, and he was still waiting for gum nuts to dry before he sent it up to Sydney um, for, for its debut here. Now, in terms of the NGV, we'll be debuting it um, at the Queer Exhibition, which opens in March 2022, so please look out for that. Um, the Queer Exhibition features over 300 works from the collection, uh, and rather than attempting to provide an encyclopedic history, it's really looking at the NGV collection collection from the Jimmy collection through uh, the queer perspective uh, and interpreting queer stories and concepts. But there's an amazing story about the um, inspiration of this dress. So, Sinead, can you share a little bit about that for us? Yeah, sure. And thank you, um, Paola, for that wonderful introduction to Paul's work, which we're very excited um, to have acquired into our collection this year. And as you mentioned, which will also be um, on display in the wonderful queer exhibition. Um, but just to give everyone a little bit of context on the Indigenous fashion collection, you know, we're actively acquiring here at the NGV and we're super excited to be supporting our First Nations designers and artists who are really agents of change and leaders within their communities and spaces of creativity. Um, Indigenous designers have been at the forefront of contemporary conversations around, you know, sustainability and ethical fashion practices. And they've also been at the vanguard of really important discussions around diversity and inclusion within the broader Australian fashion industry. And um, some key works in the collection, in the Indigenous fashion collection, include Emily Nguari's batik um, on cotton shirt, which was created in 1979 and gifted to the gallery in 1999. 
um, and the wonderful Mornington Island Bukunda dresses, which we acquired in 2017, which we'll also be talking to you about today as well. Um, you may remember them from the fabulous exhibition called Who's Afraid of Colour at the Ian Potter Centre, um, as well as new works by Lisa Watt and Ingrid Verner from 2019, um, which are also going to be on display. Um, to talk about Paul's inspiration, um, I first met Paul earlier this year, um, just after, you know, the Christmas holidays um, at an event hosted by the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair, um, Country to Couture, and it was in the, at the Collingwood Yards, and it was a wonderful fashion performance, um, but a really great way for me to meet Paul as well and get to know him and learn a bit, of, a bit about his practice. Um, and for this particular garment, you know, he said his biggest inspiration in terms of the shape and silhouette is really his grandmother, Elizabeth. You know, she grew up in the 1950s and 60s um, and she sewed a lot of her own dresses, wedding dresses and clothing. Um, and he has an array of, you know, photographs of, of his grandmother, um, who was a very stylish woman, he says. And this garment is really a way of respecting and honouring her and keeping her story alive. So it also speaks to that notion of um, the resilience of Indigenous women who express themselves through fashion, um, despite the racial policies of the day as well. And McKen combines his rich family history with his own contemporary flair and imbues within this particular garment his love for glitz and glamour. So you can see his use of native gumlets um, and eucalyptus leaves. Um, this work really challenges those ideas around, you know, what is Australiana fashion and really reclaims that through an inherently uh, Indigenous lens as well. So as you met... And can you tell us? Yeah. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I was going to say, um, you know, his connection, some a part of, you know, this, this piece was presented um, at Australian Fashion Week uh, on this fantastic model. Can you tell us a little bit about its presentation at Australian Fashion Week? Yeah, well, it was a pretty um, historic moment. Um, and many of you who are watching have probably seen, you know, photos on Instagram and in Vogue and there was a lot of uh, media for it because it was the first Indigenous-led runway event um, and with all Indigenous models and creative leads, uh, Grace Lillian Lee and Tegan Cowlishaw from Ali Fashion were the creative directors um, and they also founded First Nations Fashion Design. So you've got these incredible du designers who are really at the forefront of contemporary fashion and design, um, given an opportunity to showcase their work on a public stage like this at Australian Fashion Week. And one of the designers who I really admire, uh, Julie Shaw from Mara Collective, I often like to refer to a quote that she um, says, and she says, Indigenous designers bring a dynamic edge to the Australian fashion industry through our creative endeavours, which are enriched with story, meaning and purpose, and that in turn enriches the tapestry of Australian design. So Indigenous design, it, you know, it's really unique and it's so different to anything else that we've seen across the world. It's a real celebration of our country and our landscape, but also who we are as First Nations people today. And, you know, we are storytellers and we tell our stories through our fashion and our art. So this was a really great opportunity um, to see that on the runway. And unfortunately, you know, I was texting Paul and he, he couldn't make it to the event in person because we were both down here in, in Melbourne in lockdown, but it was great to be able to watch it virtually online as well. And it also displays a really beautiful connection to the environment. Like he talks about collecting the actual gum nuts um, and painting them himself. Is, is there a, a further sort of connection to sustainability in the environment? Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of First Nations designers, that sustainability is really at the heart of their practice. And, you know, this dress, as with other examples of Paul's works, really takes inspiration from his country, his community and the surrounding natural environment. Um, Paul is based in Melbourne and he works from his home studio down here. And he often talks about, you know, going for walks in the local parks and seeing the, the wonderful gum nuts and that really reigniting his passion for jewellery and accessories and adornment wear. 
Um, so he collects the gum nuts themselves and hand paints them with gold as really a reference to the opulence and sovereignty of First Nations people as well. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, the uh, Osoko Ganja is dead stock. So, you know, using materials, um, not wasting anything and really being environmentally conscious as well, um, which is really important to his practice. We've got another um, collaboration in the collection um, that we want to share with you as well. Um, this is a beautiful uh, collaboration between two designers, um, Werner and Lisa Walp. Um, recent, again, recently acquired. The works themselves are from 2019, um, acquired in 2020. And I'm going to start by talking a little bit about um, Werner's practice, and then I'm going to ask um, Sinead to talk a little bit about um, Lisa's practice, and then we can talk about how, how they come together so beautifully. So Werner is the label of um, Ingrid Werner, who launched Werner in 2012, but it actually came off the back of uh, other collaborations that she'd done and other design work that she'd done, uh, where there was a sort of heritage of, of, of other types of collaboration, so lots of research um, went into this. So her first uh, design collaboration was with her friend um, and colleague, uh, Monica Tywinek, and that was for a label called TV. And they worked together from 2006 to 2011, so a really great investigation into collaboration. And then when that label disbanded, she worked with um, Eastern Pearson again to get another sort of perspective on Australian design. They were based in Brisbane uh, and they were also very, their designs are very sort of embellishment and surface heavy. So she, it started to get her thinking about the relationship between the garment's form and the surface decoration upon it. As well as that, she started to think about how to create a, a small business that was self-sustainable, that could be creative and that could also open itself up to collaborations rather than there being a sort of fixed model um, all the time. It was, it was about it having a creative outlet where certain projects could make sense um, at different times. So Werner has the practice now of collaborating with different artists, different visual, visual artists, different designers, um, and as well as that, looking at the idea of Australian identity as well. Because rather than um, what we just saw before, um, looking at Australian identity through the motifs like the gum nut and things like that, she actually looks at Australian identity through its um, like cultural reality. So she likes the idea of thinking about the lack of traditional dress codes that we have here. Um, she sort of sees traditional dress codes as having much more of a European heritage, whereas Australia is sort of known for its much more relaxed attitude. So she plays to that. And within that, um, also likes to, to, to collaborate with whoever uh, makes sense to her practice at the time. So Lisa and um, Ingrid had a really beautiful meeting um, through a third party. So can you talk to us a little bit about how that collaboration came about and maybe even about Lisa's work as well? Yeah, of course. Well, Lisa Wap um, is an artist and curator of Torres Strait Islander and Gundich Mara heritage from Victoria. Her work comprises of intricately layered woven sculptures, body adornment and vessels. Um, and in 2017, she was introduced to Verna um, as part of a program that was supported by Creative Victoria. Um, and this was really initiated by Elizabeth Little, who was the manager of the Victorian Aboriginal Business Strategy Implementation. Um, and the collaboration really came about as a way of <clears throat> connecting Aboriginal artists with local fashion designers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And upon meeting Verna, Watt um, shared a sketchbook she'd been working on for many years, and it was filled with these intricate and bold designs that Watt refers loosely to as shield designs. Um, each page was covered in graphic line work representing protection of family, history, and culture. And together, Watt and Verna's chose four main designs, um, so homeward boundaries, land mapping, family circles and protection from which they created their first um, collaborative fashion line, which is Lisa Wild Times Werner. And we've been lucky enough to acquire um, one of the pieces from that early collaboration. The two beautiful works that we have here are from their 2019 collaboration titled Journeys. 
Um, and these works will also be on display at the NGBA Federation Square um, later this year. So hopefully you'll have an opportunity to see them um, in person. But what I really love most, and Paola, we were talking about this, is that idea of, you know, really sensitive collaborations. And you can really see um, the relationship that these two creators have, and it really translates through their work as well. Um, and just stunning and we're very lucky to be able to have these pieces in our collection. Mm. Yeah and we also talked about the fact that they returned to that collaboration because they worked together in 2017 and liked the experience so much and both got so much out of the experience um, that they did it again and from Lisa's point of view I was reading something that for her she she loved it because for her that was sort of wearable canvases they were animated artworks um and when someone asked if you know she was feeling a little bit uncomfortable about the fact that they were um you know being put into production uh in in multiples um she explained that no they're like i mean they're very small production runs uh so it's great to see her work sort of alive and moving around the world on the body and i just thought that was that was a beautiful vision that she created in in describing that that's um, right so we also have um, another collaborator, other collaboration, um, and it's really beautiful seeing these these different sort of um, practices come together, because this is a collaboration between Mornington Island artists uh, and Grace Lillian Lee. So Grace Lillian Lee is a Miriam Mool artist curator. Um, she's a, a, a woman of many talents. Um, and the Mornington Island artists are actually located um, in an island uh, in the Gulf of Carpentaria off the coast of North um, Queensland. So quite away from the mainland. So in some ways that could explain this sort of these very sort of bright, vibrant colours. Um, you can sort of see fish motifs, but they're very abstract, semi-abstract um, motifs that come through sort of some, sh some shellfish. Um, but they're called Burakunda dresses. Can you tell us a little bit about what that actually means? Yeah, sure. And I think too, just to... Um add as well what I really love most about First Nations fashion and design is that it really is so much about slow fashion and you see that in the work with Lisa and Verna but also in these limited edition collections um, which aren't mass, mass produced they're produced as limited different one-off wearable art pieces um, which is which is really important in terms of you know thinking about our environment and sustainability and waste as well um, but these garments uh, I love them so much. Um, I, what I really love about them, and I first saw them at the Cairns Indigenous Art Fair in 2017, um, is really that freedom and gestural application of paint to fabric. So much like painting on canvas, um, the artists from Mornington Islands have really depicted, you know, their country and the story places that they've grown up, you know, might be fishing spots that they've been around and special places that are important to them. And Bukunda means permanent markings on the body. And it really connects the artist to their country and their, their family. And this continuation of Bukunda through contemporary art making on fabric really strengthens the relationship that these artists have to their family and their community. Um, but it's also a really joyous and celebratory way as well. And a way that they're able to translate their stories onto fabric and pass that down for the next generation to enjoy. Um, and, you know, seeing these works uh, at the Cairns Indigenous Art Fair and seeing the artists wear their designs proudly was such a celebration and so important. And going back to that idea of really becoming animated, you know, with, with, with people wearing it. So they're really fabulous um, and incredible works in their collection. And this is this the first time they collaborated with a sort of fashion? Is this the first time that they've kind of created artworks for the body? So the artists have actually worked with Grace Lillian Lee before. Um, so Grace has been working with the Mornington Island artists since 2015 and she's had a few visits um, to country since then. Um, but a big part of her collaborative process is really about, you know, engaging with community, um, sharing knowledge and storytelling, but also working with young people as well. So she's collaborated with them before. Um, on a fabulous collection um, and this was the result of their 2017 collaboration and we've got 
you know, young Indigenous models here modelling the work. And this was um, a photo shoot from the Kaya fashion performance. And, you know, I really encourage any audiences who are really interested in supporting Indigenous fashion and Indigenous designers to really, um, COVID permitting, try and attend these fashion performances, which are part of, you know, the Cairns Indigenous Art Fair and the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair, because they really are something special um, and it's important to be able to, to celebrate the artists as well and see them, um, the joy that it brings um, seeing these works, you know, on the runway as well in this environment. And the other the other great thing that's happening is that um, as well as being an artist and a designer, Grace Lillian Lee is also the founder of an organisation called First Nations Fashion and Design. So there's actually she's actually got a body, um, an organisation to support designers, um, not just designers, but textile artists, um, jewelry designers, photographers, models, hair and makeup. So the whole sort of industry of uh, fashion professionals um, in particular in order to create a self-sustaining uh, ecosystem for Aboriginal fashion. So I think we can expect to see more uh, coming out of this space and it, it's very exciting. It is, it is. And, you know, fashion plays such an important role in shaping who we are and our identities. And it's really a medium that a lot of First Nation designers have continually pushed the boundaries to create works of wearable art that share cultural traditions whilst also providing space for new forms of self-expression. Um, you know, today the Indigenous fashion and textile industry is experiencing something of a renaissance where, you know, a new wave of cultural creators and artistic innovators are sharing their culture and stories with old and new audiences alike. Um, and we're very excited uh, for this and to, you know, be able to, I'm hoping next year we can get up um, to the Cairns Indigenous Art Fair and see the performances. I know it's all it's all been online Um due to COVID, but it's really great to see to see it in person as well. Mm. And it's great to see these collaborations happening sort of within different communities and also sort of across, um, you know, already established fashion labels, you know, such as Werner, as we've already described, and, you know, Paul McCann venturing into fashion again, um, you know, for the first time in, in years uh, due to, I guess, probably what's happening um, around him. Mm -hmm. So I that... I was just going to say, I should note that if you're interested in following, you know, any of the work of the designers, most of them are on Instagram. So, you know, Paul's got an Instagram account. I think it's paul.mccann underscore art. So make sure you go and follow them and watch their journey as well um, to be able to support them, which is really wonderful. So I think that wraps up our discussions for today. Um, we thank you for joining us and we really hope that you've enjoyed this short um, program. It has been a real pleasure introducing you um, to some of these works in the NGB collection. Um, we really look forward to seeing you back in the gallery when we reopen um, and we hope that you can join us for our next Fashion Friday program where we look at conservation and preparation of fashion for display. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.